In a surprising turn of events in the space race, a Chinese company called Nota Space has unveiled what appears to be a fusion of two American giants' best ideas, SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Blue Origin's technology. Their new rocket, the Space Chaser 1, isn't just another launch vehicle. It's a bold statement that combines the iconic black and white aesthetics of SpaceX with Blue Origin's innovative steering systems. Standing at an impressive 67.3 meters tall, this ambitious project isn't merely about reaching for the stars, it's about revolutionizing how we return from them. While SpaceX has mastered the art of landing rockets on their feet, Nauta Space is taking a different approach, one that might raise eyebrows in both Cape Canaveral and Van Horn. The question isn't just whether this rocket will fly, it's whether combining these different technologies into one system is brilliant innovation or a recipe for complexity. Today, we'll break down this fascinating development in China's space program and explore what it means for the future of commercial spaceflight. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. Breaking news shook the space industry last month when Nauta Space unveiled their Space Chaser 1 rocket. But the story behind this development goes deeper than mere technical specifications. Sources close to the company reveal a fascinating tale of ambition, rivalry, and a race against time that mirrors the very competition between SpaceX and Blue Origin that inspired their design. The project began three years ago in a small warehouse outside Beijing, where a team of young engineers, many fresh from China's top universities, dared to dream differently. They weren't just building another rocket. They were attempting to write the next chapter in China's space story. Their leader, a brilliant aeronautics engineer who had spent years studying both SpaceX and Blue Origin's innovations, saw an opportunity that others had missed. Looking at the Space Chaser 1 today, its black and white exterior gleaming under the spotlights, you'd never guess the controversies and challenges that shaped its development. The nine Kang Long 1 engines, each producing 70 tons of thrust, represent countless sleepless nights and heated debates among the engineering team. Some argued for a completely original design, while others pushed for proven technologies. The compromise they reached would either revolutionize the industry or become a cautionary tale. In a surprising twist, former SpaceX engineers who visited the facility noted something remarkable. The integration of seemingly conflicting technologies wasn't just a shot in the dark. Nauta Space had discovered potential synergies that neither SpaceX nor Blue Origin had explored. The steering fins, borrowed from Blue Origin's design philosophy, actually complemented their innovative pneumatic recovery system in ways nobody had anticipated. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. During early testing phases, the team encountered a phenomenon they hadn't predicted. The combination of their unique steering system and the aerodynamic design created what one engineer described as a controlled chaos effect during descent simulations. Instead of fighting against this effect, they learned to harness it, developing what they now call Pneumatic Recovery Technology 2.0. The real drama unfolded behind closed doors when discussing the tower catch system. Internal documents reveal heated debates about its feasibility. One senior engineer reportedly resigned over safety concerns, only to return months later when the team demonstrated a breakthrough in their control systems. This system isn't just about catching rockets, it's about redefining the relationship between ground infrastructure and returning spacecraft. Industry insiders were skeptical when Nauta Space announced their intention to recover both stages of the rocket. SpaceX had spent years perfecting single-stage recovery, and here was a relatively unknown company claiming they could go one step further. But then came the wind tunnel tests. Using advanced computational fluid dynamics and machine learning algorithms, they discovered a way to maintain stability during descent that nobody had considered before. The metallics fuel choice and stainless steel construction weren't just copied from SpaceX's homework. They were the result of thousands of hours of testing and a few spectacular failures. One test article, nicknamed Phoenix by the team, literally rose from the ashes of a failed pressure test to become the prototype for their final design. The scorch marks from that test are still visible in their development facility, kept as a reminder of the fine line between innovation and disaster. 
Critics argue that combining Blue Origin's steering fins with a tower catch system is like trying to perform brain surgery while riding a bicycle. Technically possible, but unnecessarily complicated. However, Nautispace's simulations tell a different story. Their integrated approach allows for what they call adaptive descent profiles, where the rocket can adjust its approach based on real-time atmospheric conditions. The space industry has seen many companies try to follow in SpaceX's footsteps, but Nauta Space's approach is different. They're not just copying, they're reimagining. Their engineering team includes veterans from China's space program, former automotive engineers, and even a former Formula One aerodynamicist. This diverse expertise has led to unconventional solutions that traditional aerospace engineers might never have considered. Recent wind tunnel tests revealed something unexpected. The interaction between their steering fins and the airflow during descent creates what engineers call a stability envelope that's actually more forgiving than traditional grid fins in certain conditions. This discovery came by accident when a test model was incorrectly mounted leading to what could be a breakthrough in re-entry control. The company's bold target of delivering 10 tons to low Earth orbit wouldn't be remarkable if it weren't for their revolutionary recovery method. Traditional wisdom says you can't have both efficiency and complexity, but Nauta Space's data suggests otherwise. Their pneumatic recovery system, while more complex than traditional methods, could reduce turnaround time between launches from days to hours. Internal documents but perhaps the most intriguing aspect of the Space Chaser 1 story is its potential impact on the future of space travel. If Nauta Space succeeds, they won't just have created another rocket, they'll have proven that the next generation of space innovation might come from combining and reimagining existing technologies in ways their original creators never considered. Recent thermal analysis of their recovery system revealed another surprising advantage. The unique interaction between their steering fins and the airflow during re-entry creates what engineers call a thermal buffer zone, potentially reducing the heat shield requirements for both stages. This unexpected benefit could lead to significant weight savings and improved payload capacity. As we look deeper into the development of Space Chaser 1, it becomes clear that this isn't just about building a rocket. It's about challenging our assumptions about what's possible in space technology. The team's willingness to question established methods and combine seemingly incompatible technologies might just rewrite the rules of the game. Industry analysts are divided on whether this ambitious project will succeed, but one thing is certain. Nauta Space has forced us to reconsider what innovation in the space industry really means. Is it about creating entirely new technologies or finding new ways to combine existing ones? The answer might lie somewhere in between just like the Space Chaser 1 itself. This story is still unfolding, with each test and development milestone adding new chapters to what could be either a revolutionary success or a cautionary tale. The space industry watches with bated breath as Nauta Space prepares for their first major tests, knowing that the outcome could reshape our understanding of what's possible in rocket design and recovery. As we conclude our analysis of Space Chaser 1, one question remains. Will this bold fusion of SpaceX and Blue Origin technologies revolutionize the space industry? Or will it join the long list of ambitious projects that never reached orbit? While the rocket's innovative features show promise, history reminds us that success in space requires more than just combining existing technologies. It demands relentless testing, refinement, and often learning from failure. Next week's scheduled test of their pneumatic recovery system could provide crucial insights into whether Nauta Space's unique approach has merit. The space community will be watching closely, knowing that a successful demonstration could signal In 1969, President Richard Nixon made history with a groundbreaking phone call from the Oval Office to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they stood on the moon's surface. Now, over half a century later, SpaceX is preparing for another pivotal moment in space exploration that could see similar historic calls being made from the White House to astronauts on lunar soil. 2025 is shaping up to be a transformative year for space exploration. 
With SpaceX's Starship program accelerating at an unprecedented pace, Kathy Luters, general manager of SpaceX's Boca Chica operations, just unveiled ambitious plans that have sent shockwaves through the aerospace industry. With a target of 25 Starship launches planned for next year, that's one launch every two weeks. SpaceX isn't just pushing boundaries, they're completely redefining what's possible. But the real bombshell? This is merely the beginning. From the revolutionary booster catching system demonstrated in Flight 5, to the groundbreaking orbital refueling technology needed for NASA's Artemis III mission, SpaceX is laying the groundwork for something far more ambitious, multiple launches per day. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. On November 14th, as the early morning sun rose over Florida's space coast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket thundered into the sky, carrying 24 Starlink satellites into orbit. But this wasn't just another launch. It marked SpaceX's 368th successful booster landing, a testament to how far we've come in the reusable rocket revolution. This particular booster, a veteran of 18 missions, tells a story of persistence and innovation that few could have imagined when SpaceX first began. The journey to this point has been nothing short of extraordinary. Back in 2010, when SpaceX first launched the Falcon 9, skeptics questioned whether reusable rockets were even possible. That year, they managed just two launches, one in June and another in December. From 2010 to 2019, they completed 77 launches total. Now, in a striking demonstration of exponential growth, they're achieving more launches in a single year than they did in their first decade of operations. In 2024 alone, the Falcon 9 has already soared to space 100 times, making what was once extraordinary seem almost routine. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. While the Falcon 9's achievements are impressive, they're merely a prelude to what's coming. Enter Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. Standing taller than any rocket in history and boasting unprecedented capabilities, Starship isn't just an evolution in rocket design, it's a revolution in space transportation. Recent footage from Flight 5 captured a moment that left even veteran aerospace engineers in awe. The successful catching of the super heavy booster by the massive mechanical arms nicknamed Mechazilla. This wasn't just a technical achievement, it was a glimpse into the future of space travel. The precision required to catch a massive rocket booster with mechanical arms is comparable to threading a needle while riding a motorcycle at supersonic speeds. During what seemed like a routine presentation at the Mexico Space Agency's National Congress of Space Activities, Kathy Luters, who oversees SpaceX's Boca Chica operations, revealed plans that sent shockwaves through the aerospace industry. SpaceX isn't just planning for occasional Starship launches, they're targeting 25 missions in 2025. That's one launch every two weeks, a cadence that would have seemed impossible just a few years ago. But Elon Musk, never one to think small, quickly added fuel to the fire. We will be much faster than that, he declared, hinting at even more ambitious plans. According to Luters, Musk's ultimate vision involves multiple launches per day, a launch frequency that would transform space travel as fundamentally as the introduction of commercial aviation transformed air travel in the 20th century. The timing of this acceleration isn't coincidental. NASA's Artemis III mission, scheduled for 2026, represents humanity's triumphant return to the moon. But unlike the Apollo missions of the 1960s, this time we're going back with technology that would seem like science fiction to the original moon landing team. SpaceX's Starship HLS, Human Landing System, will serve as the cosmic elevator carrying astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface. Here's where the complexity of modern space exploration becomes apparent. Due to its massive size and power, Starship consume 